The investigators were recently ordinary citizens of the jiving 1950s suburbia. In their own way, they had discovered something amiss, something fundamentally wrong and twisted about the world around them. Curiosity caused them to track down other like-minded individuals and band together. Seeking further truths, they have delved deeper, their minds warping, seeing formless shapes in the night that might otherwise be deemed in paranoia. As they teeter on the brink of madness, they find themselves gifted with inhuman abilities, insight to the looking glass beyond. It would have almost been a blessing if it wasn't for the nauseating feeling that something was staring back, unblinking. Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer Kickstarter board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is called I Am the Fourth Wall. In this game, you'll be playing as a team of investigators in search of more knowledge because suddenly you realize that there are gates opening up around the city. You'll be using your marbles and or sanity to try and unlock these, uh, unlock these gates and stop whatever undescribable, unspeakable horror is trying to break through. All while at the same time, you'll realize that there are a bunch of Cthulian mythos style monsters monsters that are roaming the streets. You'll be using your marbles to also try and reduce the amount of terror that is uh, embarking upon the plane, and also try and closing the, to close the gate. All at the same time, the mythos monster has actually been trying to awake from its slumber. After a certain period of time, if you guys are unable to close all the gates, you will lose. However, if all of the gates open uh, before that time happens, you will also lose. The only way is if you close all the gates before that happens happens. All right, let's go ahead and check out the game. So here we have Slinky Gibbon Games and I am the fourth wall. This is what it's going to come with. And as you can see, there are three manuals. One is for how to play the game along with how to play the wall. And if you'd like, you can actually do a one verse all game. And this is going to be the tomb for the wall player. These are all the tokens you'll be getting throughout the game and you'll be using them periodically for different reasons, a targeting piece and the scourge piece, along with how many actions the enemy is going to have. These are the gates and depending on how many players the game is, it's going to determine how many gates there are and you don't want to have five spawn or you'll lose the game. Over here, these things are our action cards or basically our player reference cards that we'll be using to remember what we can do on our turn. These are the different investigators in the game, and as you can see, there is quite a few of them, and it'll tell you how many uh, cards you can have in your hand, as well as an ability that they have, and um, I think an extra ability down here, kind of what they do. This is the streets, and there are five of them, and depending on whether or not monsters or horrors will be here is depending on what will happen throughout the game. This is actually going to be the horror, and if you're playing with four or six investigators, you're gonna go ahead and take this card and place it right on the slumber area. It's where they're gonna begin the game. Uh, for this one here, it's a, a six player game, so it's gonna be less rounds. You don't want the ancient one to awaken, and as the game progresses, different things are going to happen. You're also going to be getting three decks of cards. Marbles, which are going to basically be your sanity, and they're going to allow you to aid you in your quest to defeat the monsters and close the gates. The presence deck is going to be what is going to happen on the enemy's turn, and depending on how many actions they get is depending on what's going to happen, whether it be monsters coming down onto the board, or whether it be the boss using his ability, and a few other things. Finally, you have the horror deck, and the horror deck is going to show you all the different Cthulian mythos-based monsters that you're going to be getting throughout the game that will hit the streets, such as Migo, Lights in the Mist, Shogoth, and more. These guys can be as weak as cultists or as strong as one of the horrors themselves. All right, let's go ahead and talk about a player's turn. So when beginning I Am the Fourth Wall, you're gonna have every single player choose an investigator, and all of the investigators are going to have their own unique action, passive, and how many cards they're going to start in their hand, which is basically marbles or sanity. You're gonna be using these cards to defeat all the Cthulian or Lovecraftian mythos monsters on the streets, as well as to close the gates. After you've got your hand of cards and your character, you're gonna choose one of these activate, uh, investigator action cards, in which you have choice to use two out of all of these abilities, or two two action points, and some of these abilities are going to be costing one, and others will cost two. So you have your choice of the bunch. After all of the investigators have taken their turn, then the monster and or the wall will present its its turns, and based on how many of its action points, or these things here, is going to determine what is going to happen. You'll be using this presence deck to draw a card per action, and you can see what happens here. Destroying a marble on the street, or basically something that happens on the street that you can actually use, and I'll show you how that works. Or maybe wrath, using a wall 
wall's unique action. And depending on what time it is in the game or how far you are along, the wall might not actually be awake. That is the sleeping monster that can appear like Yog sogoth And uh, other things too, you're gonna have the numbers one through five right here and each one of them represents a different location on the street. And at first you're going to manifest a monster from the horror deck and place it on that location. And then after that, if there's already a monster, you're going to actually trigger its ability. When monsters die, death rattling things happen and that changes the game as well. And throughout the game, you're going to be trying to draw marbles, play them, remove the monsters on the street, as well as closing the wall. And the way you close the wall is one of each symbol. And by discarding that for two actions, which is basically your turn, you'll be able to remove one. There's three for easy and it gets more progressively difficult with however many walls or, or, or gates you want to open in the game so you can make it even more complicated if you like but let me go ahead and show you the setup of the game and a couple of turns of play all right so i went ahead and set up a game for three players for i am the wall and as you can see this tracker here is going to show three investigators it's going to have a front and a back for three and four and there's also five and six you're going to place your card that you've picked randomly from all these cards here and place it here this is going to be the boss of the game and if you want to increase the difficulty of the game you simply will add more of these guys to make a larger portal <laughs> many gates as you want to have but three is the easiest and that's where I would suggest you start after you've gone ahead and done that make sure that the boss has three actions he's gonna begin the game with three and after he begins the game with three it'll be two unless something changes as long as the crescendo is not up if the crescendo goes up these guys will get three on your turn you're gonna get two actions however also when the crescendo happens you'll get three as well so now to begin the game so to begin the game after we've all set up all the decks over here everybody's got their hand size of four five and five you're also going to go ahead and uh, set your street cards up here so that way you can see all the different numbers it's pretty simple all right so we'll go ahead and go through each one of these first the presence says wrath use the wall's unique action well the wall is not currently awoke so the wall is not going to actually have a unique action so this is going to be done then the next card here is going to be delve reveal the top of the horror deck and trigger it and then discard the card Okay, so we revealed this, and the trigger is sacrifice three cultists and, and or cult leaders in the combination to open a gate, which would mean if there's three cults here, you can simply sacrifice them, and then you're going to get a new gate on here, which makes it even more difficult. But luckily enough, that does not trigger because it does not happen. And the next thing here is going to be the number one. Okay, so the number one here says that you have to trigger a whore, so take the top guy up, or... Uh, on Untrained Boulevard, and if there is no horror, then you have to manifest it. So manifesting is simply taking a card from the top and then placing it down onto the board in the appropriate location with the number. So we've gone ahead and done that. This is manifesting it. Now, if we actually had a character already here or a monster already here, we would go ahead and trigger it by triggering the ability like we tried to do on the last one. So we go ahead and put that guy there. All right, so the next thing that's going to happen is you're going to take all the cards in the presence deck and make sure you shuffle them up so that they can be used again on the next turn. You never know what you're going to get. And after you shuffle them up, you can go ahead and remove these and put two on for the next person's turn. After that, this player is going to get to go. And this player gets to do two actions. And as you can see, here are the different actions labeled. You can search, which is simply drawing a card from the marble deck, because you always have to have at least one card in your hand. If you don't, you're going to open up another gate, and you don't want to do that. So you can search and just pick a card up from the top of the deck and place it in your hand. You can't have more than your allotted card size hand limit, though. You can also intervene, which is playing a card down on one of these spaces here and that would be because you would want to try and destroy a monster for instance each monster has symbols here this has two magnifying glasses so if it was this guy's turn he would intervene by taking this card here placing it on the monster and thus destroying it if it would not have enough to destroy it simply actually playing maybe this holy symbol on this monster it would do one damage you leave it there so that the next time it, it takes another one of these magnifying glasses you can remove it and that's how you're going to kill monsters by intervening you could also choose to utilize cards and there's a ton of cards you can choose to utilize. For instance, this one lets you draw three marbles and give them to any investigators of your choice, simply by playing this card. You won't get to use the symbols, however, and you're going to have to discard it afterwards, but that is a choice you have to make. Other ones are like this Elder Sign, one of the most powerful cards in the game. You can discard any horror down on the street, you can use it for all three of its symbols, or you can choose to 
uh, actually do something even more unique with this card, which I'll show you in a second. All right, we're moving on to our unique action, which are going to be on our investigator cards here. and tells you how much it's going to cost as far as actions are, are, are uh, going, like one, one, and zero, and then what it does. Another action is going to give or trade a card, which is pretty simple. Give a card to another player or trade with another player. And then you could choose to exploit the rift. In order to exploit the rift, you're going to need to sacrifice three marbles from your hand that have three different symbols. And you can do that in any combination you'd like. So for instance, this card right here, if you chose to exploit the rift with it, you could actually get rid of a single rift with just this one elder sign. It's very, very powerful. However, if you didn't have that card in hand, you could actually just maybe get these three cards, which have the gun the magnifying glass and the potion bottle, sacrificing those to remove one of these guys. Uh, and, and like I said before, if you actually remove these cards from the game, you win. Another thing is, oh sorry, <laughs> exploiting the gate, that's, that's closing the gate. What I just explained is closing the, day, the gate. Exploiting the rift is actually using these abilities down here. So for instance, if I wanted to use this guy's ability to exploit the rift, I'm actually going to give the boss an extra action on the next turn, and I'm going to do what it says. And blitzing is interesting. Blitzing is going one, two, three, four, five, six, seven from the top of the marble deck. And every symbol with, every card with this symbol on it is going to be utilized for uh, playing when you're uh, intervening. However, you can't use the uh, abilities down below. So I would get all these cards here, and for everyone with the magnifying glass, which would be these two, I would then be able to use to place on monsters to defeat them. Like I said, though, it's going to give the boss an extra action on the next turn, though, so if you, don't, you may or may not want to use those. They're very powerful, though, but let's say we didn't do that. And like I said before, it's closing the gate, which is exactly as I explained before. <laughs> it's removing one of each type of symbol. All right. Uh, also, you can choose to regroup, which is going to let you draw two cards or drop to your hand size limit, and then also that would end your turn, but you could also trade with other players that have chosen to regroup. So that is the basic aspect of what you can do, and then the wall is just going to counter with his presence deck. All right, and, th and then after everybody's turn is taken, you're going to go ahead and move this, this slumber track from 8 to 7, and then every takes their turn again, 6, so on and so forth. All right, so we'll go ahead and take his turn really quick, and I think we're going to go ahead and use our Elder Sign, because it's very, very powerful, and it's going to uh, close one of the gates here, so we'll close this gate here. Already won one third of the way from win to winning. All right, so after that, he's going to end his turn. He took his two actions. Unfortunately, he couldn't destroy these guys, and that's the cost of choosing to close a gate, is more things could happen. So we'll remove these two and add to the presence deck and flip, okay? Susie Q Avenue, and we'll put this down here. And we got a maniac there. And the maniac says, and uh, this is a trigger that says an elected investigator must lose two marbles. Let's be careful with that. And it's going to cost a number of guns equal to the number of gates available right now. So two guns to destroy this monster. Another actually interesting aspect of the game is up here is going to say what happens when you have monsters here. An investigator may search whenever a horror is defeated at, at Suzy Q Avenue. Getting a free card is nice destroying this. Investigators may not close any gates whenever there is a monster at the Unchained Boulevard. So because there's a monster here, if there's a monster here, you can't close gates. So we're not going to be closed gates as easily anymore. This one over here is ignore the death rattle of horrors at Sandman Terrace. Investigators may not use or the regroup action while there's a horror on this place. And the wall regenerates one action, an additional doom while there is a horror at this specific area. So, okay, let's go ahead and take another action, which is going to be this one here, Delve. Reveal the top of the horror deck and trigger its effect. Target investigator must trade their hand with another target investigator. Okay, so let's just show how targets work. First of all, you choose an investigator at the beginning to be a target. This is going to be the investigator that is a target. And it simply says target investigator, which is this guy, will trade his hands with the next target. Every time this word target comes up, you're going to move it. And so this will switch with this guy. And then because it is said target, it'll move again. So target investigator trades hands with this target, moving it to this guy. So the next time a target card comes up, it'll be this guy, and it'll move to here. And that's how targeting works. Now he's gone ahead and taken his actions, go ahead and place those two back, and now it's this guy's turn. He can go ahead and begin his actions. He's definitely going to remove, use this card here, utilize this one to destroy this monster here, because there's two and this has three, so that'll go ahead and get rid of this guy right here, making it possible to actually close the gates again. 
but unfortunately he doesn't have all three symbols so he can't do that but he could choose to draw an extra card and then it will be once again the gate's turn or the, the wall's turn so the presence will actually do his cards again and so on and so forth and the game's going to go like that and monsters are going to spawn all across the streets so you're going to have to try and decide when's best to close the gate and when's best to defeat the monsters all while at the same time after every player's taken their turn this moves up eventually when the eyes open the wall will the wall will start doing his ability which is scary and this monster is Yog Sogoth and it says he delves twice now sometimes they'll have two different abilities and whenever this happens you're simply choose the first one whenever you're doing a cooperative game but if you're playing the one versus many the, the other player will have that option to do either one and then after that, it'll go to the crescendo where everybody's going to get three abilities, including the wall. And finally, if the Ancient One awakens, the game is over and he has been successful. As well as after the eyes open, then if there are five gates on the space over here, the game is over and you lose. However, if you'd like to make the difficulty increasingly hard, you can add all five gates and you'll have to remove one by the time it gets here, otherwise you're going to lose. But yes, at any point after that, if you have five gates, it's over. Closing the gates is going to get you to win, and that is how you play the game I Am The Fourth Wall. You play the game The Fourth Wall, right? Now, of course, there is a couple other variants, and one very specific one, in which I'm not going to engage in right now, is the actually one versus many, where one player will play as the wall. It's pretty similar. That's why I figured you guys can check it out yourself on the campaign page, is how it works, with a couple exceptions, one being that the wall is going to be able to make choices and decide how things go, as well as their specific wall abilities that you'll get to choose from which I kind of explained on the uh, on the explaining through in the walkthrough but overall that's the basis of the game now I'll go over a couple of the other horror cards as well as some of the marbles and what they do so you get a good idea of that target investigator must search target investigator must lose two marbles also what I didn't explain too is the death rattle the bottom of these cards is basically a red rim that says the wall may not delve or what else we got here an elected investigator must lose a marble so on and so forth whenever you defeat these monsters you'll have to trigger their death rattle and the only way you're not going to do that is if they're upside down, which is another little interesting rule. But um, for the most part, you're going to have to trigger their death rattle. A horror on the streets is no longer drained, which is what, the car which I was talking about. When you drain a monster upside down, there's certain things that don't happen with that monster. The wall may delve, target investigator loses a marble. They're, they're pretty similar, right, as far as far hard they go. But it's still going to make the game a little more different when you destroy them. And it's even worse though when you leave them on the field. So there's other things that say sacrifice the horror and open a gate. That's nasty. Target investigator must search. Target investigator must lose two marbles. Target the next during the next uh, investigator turn, the investigator may not use their unique actions. Find a cultist and manifest it, putting it back on the field. And even some really evil ones too. I mean, the gatekeeper is pretty evil as it is. Sacrifice the horror and open a gate. And some ghouls too. That's gonna hurt more. That hurt the investigators. And because you want to keep cards in your hand, at least one of them. If you don't, you're going to put more gates open there's also marbles and the most powerful one which i already showed you was going to be the elder sign that one if you play that one and use your two actions you're going to be able to close one of the gates but there's stuff like Moltov cocktails which can give you a ton of symbols at the cost of um the wall let's see the wall targets and investor to lose a marble when you're in, ever intervene with this card so it, it, there's a cost to this one. Losing, you have to discard a card from your hand to use it. Um, you got the revolver, which is a rush. Rush abilities are going to allow you to play cards that are not on your turn, and you can ignore the death rattle of a defeated monster when you play that, which is useful. Utilize draw three marbles and give them to an investigator of your choice, or simply play it for three and uh, negate all of these little uh, the, the magnifying glasses on a specific horror when you intervene with this. There's also something called the streets, which I talked about a little bit. And this is going to trigger whenever you utilize a card. Like, for instance, this one. Anchor this to the streets, and the wall may not use its aura ability, which is very powerful, except for the fact that the wall deck can destroy these cards whenever it draws them. But you can actually put these on the field, and it will help you defeat the monsters a little easier at the choice of not using the symbols, because once they're on the streets, they're there until they're destroyed. Destroyed. But that's the basic idea of the game. When a monster, whenever one of your characters is destroyed, you're going to put a gate up and you're going to have to choose a new one, similar to the other Arkham style games. All right, let me tell you what you think about it. All right, so I've played a lot of games with the Cthulhu style thing. It's been a big trendy thing lately. And I mean, I love the Cthulhu mythos. They love crafting mythos. I think it has brought a lot of terror and fun to the genre. I'm glad that board games are creating more of them. I don't know if everybody's going to feel about that, but for me, Cthulhu is always a plus. And this game is so much more unique than all of the rest of them I played. This one brings its own aspect to it. It's a one versus many or co-op and both of them work very well. I played more of the cooperative version so I'm going to talk about that more than that and I think that with that one 
it's challenging. Throughout the entire game, even playing on easy and even three or four gates, it's still challenging. We've always had a really, really close game and where the gates are almost closed and the guy's almost about to wake up and the different monsters throughout the game, the different um, horrors that are popping up that you have to fight against, they have a lot of unique abilities that are very scary. And there's quite a few of them too. It comes with like Cthulhu, you know, Nyaranthotep, uh, Ithagawa, Ithagawa uh, Haster, and Shubnigaroth. And this one says, what's this one here? Manifest a horror for one less than its, its manifest cost as an action. And whenever a horror is defeated, you may delve. Really powerful cards. It makes these guys actually very formidable. All at the same time, the streets are nasty too. Because if they get too filled up and you're trying to defeat all of the gates before the streets get filled up, by that time, all the streets will be full of monsters and you won't be able to destroy any of the gates anyway because you have to deal with them first. And as time progresses, things just get more and more insane. And I like that feeling of insanity in the game because that is the basic idea of the theme of this game. You're feeling like you, you don't want to lose all your marbles. If you lose all your marbles, it's it's over for all you guys because it just starts getting way, way out of hand. But you have to play these cards because these are the tools you're going to be using throughout the game to decide your fate. And some of them are so powerful, but it, the cost is so, so high, especially if you want to trigger the rift here, like you you and up to two other investigators may all search for uh, may all search or all intervene. How awesome is that at the cost of giving the bad guy yet another action on his turn? And it's always a risk, especially Blitz. This card is was a lot of fun. I was very happy with this mechanic, having the ability to draw dig into a bunch of cards at the cost of giving the boss an extra ability and all at the same time you can get a ton of great cards in this or you can get absolutely none and be mortified it works so well the theme is great in this game i love the fact that they added the additional one versus many and it works pretty well as well but i really really like the co-op aspect of this game i think for people who don't like very difficult or challenging games this probably won't be one for you but if you like a lot of challenge you like the cthulhu style of crafting mythos this is going to be one for you you don't mind that kind of cooperative card game with a lot of options. It has a lot, not too many to where it's confusing, but quite a few indeed. This whole card tells you what you can do. And there's always a better choice, you know. I always felt like, oh, I wish I should have done that, which is great because it's going to mean that the game is going to be more and more um, I have more and more choices next time. Like, this is what I need to do this time. And as I play the game, I got better. And maybe, maybe next time I play, I'll play it on the harder difficulty, but I don't know, it's so hard. All right, guys, thanks for watching the Unfiltered Gamer Kickstarter board game review. If you like this video, go check out those videos here on YouTube. Like, subscribe, and comment. It all helps, and we do greatly appreciate it, as well as checking out I Am The Fourth Wall, currently on Kickstarter, in the description below, as well as checking out our website, unfilteredgamer.com. We've got tons of blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more. And if you want, you can go ahead and check out my buddies over at everythingboardgames.com, the giveaway gig, and Ferdinand, the cardboard stacker. They got some tutorials and giveaways and blog posts as well. All right, guys, that's all I got for you this time. And as always, beware of the gates opening. And I'll see you next time. <laughs>